Okay, so fallbacks suck. So sadly, we probably need fallbacks in, at this point in the stage. You have like 78% or so support. It's close, but of course, Internet Explorer, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it feels like the old days sometimes with this stuff. Um, but it, it is what it is. Luckily, fallbacks are really easy to do, so we're going to see that in this video. Sadly, it's kind of annoying to do them. So in the next video, we're going to get a, jump into some more advanced SAS and see how we can actually um, make it so we can write less code and still have the fallbacks. So it's just, for now, we're just looking at how fallbacks work, and you're going to see it's super duper easy. Let's go check that out. All right, so here we go. We're in CodePen, so as usual, the link for this will be shared down below. Um, so what we're doing with this one is we're looking at how to create our fallbacks, right? So I've just coded up my, my thumbnail for this, actually. It was kind of fun. So if you want to see how I did it, you can uh, look in here a little bit more. But basically, this big background area is in my background div. Um, I have my title, which is there. You can see the H1, which is all of this, and then my number that's right there. So there's not too much markup going into this. Um, if we look into here, I do have these, and everything's looking fantastic, right? So you're going, well, why do we need to worry about browser support? Well, this is why. Here's Internet Explorer. And this is the, this is the current Internet Explorer. I'm up to date on this. Um, so that sort of sucks, right? That it just doesn't work here. Edge is now supporting things, but Internet Explorer and a few others aren't. So um, just to take a look quickly at that, uh, we can see here that uh, Internet Explorer, no support, Opera Mini, no support, uh, and the UC browser for Android, which has a really big usage at 8.24%. So we're only looking at 77%, which is kind of on the low side. Um, but even Edge, it was had some issues, but now it's, it's supported fully. So we're, we're getting much, much, much better. Um, so basically what we need to do is we want to come through and, um, and this is where it's kind of annoying, but I have my light blue here. So let's just take that and copy that value. Um, and we'll come down and find my background where I've used it. So here I've used the like, variable of light blue. Pretty much the fallback is just to write the initial value originally on top. And that's it. So I'm saying this is my color. And then this is my color. So if you know how the cascade works, if I did color red underneath, that one's going to win because it's reading this one first, then it's reading this one, and then it's reading that one. So this is the last one. So this one wins. So the idea here is it's going to read this one first, then it's going to read this one. If it understands what the variable is, it's going to use this. If it doesn't understand this, it's going to ignore it, and it's just going to use this one here. So basically, if you do want to create fallbacks, you're going through and um, you're just, you know, putting all of anywhere you used your variable. So I'd have here my background as uh, that. So just to show you that this is working, I'm going to save what I've done here. And let's open up Internet Explorer again and refresh this. And you can see it's starting to come together. So my blue color is working here and my yellow color is working there. But you're probably also looking at this going, well, what's the point in CSS variables now? You know, if I have to write it without the variable and then with the variable, what the hell is even the point in using variables? That's a good question. It does seem redundant to both and it kills the joy of using them. So they still do have some big advantages, which include making the changes on the fly with JavaScript really easy, which we're going to be seeing in a couple of videos from now. Um, but to help get rid of all the redundancy of having to do this, SAS can make our life so much easier because we can make a little SAS map and then a function and then use a mix in. It takes a little bit of time to set up, but it's not overly complicated. And I'm going to show you how you can do that in the next video. So yeah, fallbacks. They're easy to do, but it sort of is really redundant and kills almost the point of them. Not quite, but it... it takes away from the magic of the variable. In the next video, and it's already there, so you can jump right into it. It's gonna be a lot more of an advanced video. We're looking at SAS, we're gonna be building a function, we're gonna be using a SAS map, and we're gonna be using a mix-in. A lot of fun. Look forward to seeing you there. Uh, if you'd like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions, any comments whatsoever. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.